Now, if I had to say the one thing that's improved me as a photographer more than anything else, it's this. Now, one of the best bits of advice I was ever given was to slow down. But nowadays, everything is so immediate. Instant gratification. Take a picture, edit it, post it online, done, and move on to the next picture. Now, tethering slows you down, but by the very nature of what it is, it also speeds you up. So in this video, I want to explain what tethering is, why you would even think about tethering, and how we tether, specifically looking at the hardware and the software, which in this case is going to be Lightroom. So what is tethering? Well, in its simplest terms, it's a way of connecting your camera to your computer or a mobile device so that you can see the pictures that you're taking on a much bigger screen whilst you're taking them. Now, the screens on the back of our cameras are really good these days. However, they're still small and it can be very difficult to see whether a scene is well lit or if in fact there's something in the picture that could either do with taking out or maybe moving. A larger screen means you see everything much clearer. So even though you're slowing down to look at the screen, you're actually working quicker because it means you end up taking less photographs and it also increases your success rate. If you're somebody that shoots for clients, it also looks really professional as your client can clearly see how everything is looking rather than everybody huddled around your camera as you try not to let it time out or maybe try to move around so they can see every part of the picture. So that's the what and the why, but what about the kit? Now there's actually a lot of accessories you can get for making life easier, either in the studio or on location. But keeping things really simple, all we need is a cable. Longer than the one that comes with your camera, but it really is as simple as just plugging one end into your camera and the other into your computer. Oh, and why orange, you might ask? But diving into Lightroom, tethering is generally pretty straightforward to set up. Once you've plugged your camera into your computer, with most brands, it's just a case of opening up Lightroom, going to File, then Tethered Capture, and Start Tethered Capture. Here we can then give the photo shoot session a name. We can then choose a name that we want the files to be given as they're imported. We can choose where we want those files to be imported to. We can apply our metadata to the images as they come in and also apply keywords. Once we click OK, Lightroom then recognizes that your camera is attached. You can see the settings and even change some of them. And away you go. Every time you take a picture, it'll be stored on the computer, also on the camera, and it'll appear on the big screen. However, what if you're a Sony user like me? Lightroom doesn't currently support tethering with Sony. And the last thing you want to do is to move away from it completely when it's a big part of your workflow just because of tethering. Now there is the Sony Imaging Edge download that itself enables tethering. You can also use that to tether into Lightroom and you'll see lots of videos on YouTube showing how to set it up, but it is a little bit clunky. You have to turn off things like Dropbox and Google Drive and then turn them back on again once you're set up in case that's where you want to save your images. You also have to set up a watched folder, and all of this is a bit of a faff and I find actually quite slow. Another piece of software is called Smart Shooter 4, and that's made by the folks who specialize in making tethering equipment, tether tools. This is not a sponsored or paid for video. Smart Shooter 4 has two versions, the regular and the pro, and unless you're doing multi-camera setups and really advanced stuff like that, then the regular version is exactly what you need. But using Smart Shooter couldn't be simpler. Simply install it, turn it on, plug your camera in, and that's it. You're good to go. Now, there is a lot of stuff that you can do in here. We can see and control settings. We can turn on things like Live View, and we can remotely control the camera. We can even do stuff like delayed triggering, focus stacking, high dynamic range and time lapses, and way more. When it comes to the images, it's really quick at importing them. I'm using a Sony a7R4, which is a 61 megapixel sensor, and I've got it set so that the raw files appear, and it's quick. The raw files go to the computer, but also stay on the memory card on the camera. But if you wanted just the JPEGs to appear so it's even quicker, and the raws stay on the camera's memory card, just choose both in the storage section. 
but you can also use Smart Shooter in conjunction with Lightroom if you are 100% adamant that you want to do everything in Lightroom. Now, before you do any of this tethering stuff, certainly if you're a Sony user, go to the menu and find the PC remote section. Turn it on and then set the method to USB. Then from within Smart Shooter, and you only need to do this just the once, go to the Preferences and find the Lightroom tab. All you need to do then is click on Install Plugin, then make sure that you have a tick in the Enable Lightroom Tethering Connection checkbox, and also a tick in the Allow Lightroom Plugin to Shut Down Application checkbox. Click on Apply, and then click OK. So now then, if we want to use Lightroom for tethering, all we need to do is to make sure that we have Smart Shooter turned on. We can obviously minimize it, but it needs to be on. Then we just open up Lightroom and set up tethering as per normal. We just go to File, Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. There is no need to turn off and on any kind of cloud storage. There's no need to set up any kind of watch folders. We just use it as we would want to use it. And the great thing is, the speed that we would see images coming into Smart Shooter is the speed that we'll see images coming into Lightroom. And also the other functionality, we can choose whether or not we want the JPEGs or the RAWs to come in. And also things like the HDR, the focus stacking, the time lapsing, all that is gonna come into Lightroom. So this really is opening up not just the reliability of it, it's enabling us to use other brands of cameras that maybe aren't supported just yet, but also we're getting so much more functionality. Now, one question I get asked quite a lot is whether I actually show the people I'm photographing their pictures whilst we're doing the photo shoot. And the answer to that is absolutely yes, but the way I do it has completely changed because what I used to do would be to compliment them. So I would turn the laptop towards them and go, you look amazing. Wow, you're absolutely killing this. And what I thought would be positive by me complimenting them actually had a negative effect. They became really self-conscious and withdrawn and it kind of ruined the photo shoot. So what I do now is I compliment myself. And what I mean there is I'll turn the laptop towards them and go, these are coming out great. The lighting is fantastic in here. Really happy how these are going. Now the person in front of the camera sees me being happy about what I'm doing, about what I'm creating, not about how they look, but about what I'm doing. And I don't know if this is reverse psychology or what, but they seem to be more prepared then and more confident in front of the camera and more willing to please. So give that a try. Don't compliment them, compliment yourself. For me, it's had a massive difference. So there you go, I hope that's been useful. It's actually really simple to do when you're tethering directly into Lightroom, but if like me, you're a Sony user and you have to use something else, maybe like Smart Shooter, which on its own is a great standalone piece of kit, but for using that to tether into Lightroom, you're gonna get the ease of setup, the speed that the images will come in, and also all that extra functionality like the focus stack and the HDR and the time lapse. But that's pretty much all I've got for you this week. If it's been useful to you, if you've liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button because that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's all I've got for you. I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next video. Oh,